Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, something a little bit different this time around. Uh, I've had uh, a little bit more free time these last few months as far as uh, work schedule goes and whatnot. So uh, I kind of want to get back into my music. And, uh, you know, I already had instruments and amps and all that, but uh, you know how boys and their toys are. But anyway, uh, I'm going to show you a couple things that I got recently. Um, I had been in a, a, a local guitar center uh, probably a couple of years ago, and I was just fiddling around on different basses and whatnot. And uh, I picked up a uh, Schechter bass, and uh, it was a five-string, it was a studio series, and just fell in love with it, you know, just a uh, thing... Uh, I just love the way it felt and the way it played and the, the way it sounded. And when it got time to uh, get serious, and I thought, well, you know, not that I needed another bass, but uh, when I got it in my head that I wanted to get one, uh, you know, all the dealers, you know, around uh, that I could get to, you know, didn't have to drive hundreds of miles up, uh, didn't carry Schecter stuff, or at least didn't carry the bases. So, you know, I started looking around online and, uh, I found a good deal uh, on uh, musiciansfriend.com, and uh, usually I don't like to buy stuff sight unseen, especially musical instruments and stuff, because you know you kind of want to play them. So, uh, but like I say, there weren't any dealers that, that had these. So uh, I got online and I got on YouTube and watched all the demos, and uh, you know did some research and you know as far as like dependability and you know uh, some reviews and all that. So uh, I broke down and uh, bought one, and I bought a uh, a new Ampeg bass amp, which I already had uh, three other amps anyway. I had a I got a little uh, I got an older Ampeg combo, and I loved it, but uh, it's kind of on its last legs, and the speaker's back gone, and it's going to have a lot, have to have a lot of uh, repairs done on the wiring if I'm going to play it. So uh, and I had another uh, small. <laughs> Sort of like, a, I guess, maybe a, a Walmart special. I think my son had bought me several years ago for Father's Day just to practice on and play music through. And and uh, I got a big 500-watt uh, GK. It's got like a four tens, four Gokone go uh, tens and a cabinet. It's a 500-watt uh, amp head. And, and that's just a bit too much even for a club. Uh, if you were going to play, uh, I don't know, I guess in a concert or uh, like a... Uh, a festival setting, which you know, I played a few blues festivals in, in the last uh, few years. But unless you're playing something like that, or you're out maybe like in a what we old timers like to call a field party when we were teenagers, you know, you go out in a big field and, uh, and just have the music blaring and have a great time out on somebody's farm. Uh, but I just decided, you know, I, I always loved the uh, Ampeg brand of amplifiers, and uh, this was uh, one I want to show you, you know, it's a uh, you know, it's the combo, so it's all built in one. It's a little bit more compact, and there's like at least three or four features that really made me want this amp. Uh, okay, I'll go ahead and show you this to you. Uh, like I say, this is a uh, an Ampeg uh, BA210 450 watt uh, combo. Uh, as far as the speakers, can't see them, but because they're behind the uh, the front, but you got uh, two tens and a hi-fi tweeter in the top. As far as the controls, uh, you can see there. There's the uh, input for your bass, and the 15 dB. That's for uh, if you play uh, bass with the active pickups, which I do. Uh, so that's uh, for that. Uh, next controls you have are uh, a little overdrive. Uh, section scrambler and uh, this is basically if you want to get like a dirty sound or get a lot of overdrive in your bass and I don't use it a whole lot but once in a while it's kind of fun to play with so it's uh, got an overdrive switch and you got the drive and the blend controls here uh, next up uh, you got your uh, got your main volume control you got an ultra high frequency boost and an ultra low frequency boost depending on uh, what kind of sound you want to get uh, along here you got your basic uh, three-band EQ. You got the bass, mid, and the treble. And over here you have a uh, you have a jack for the foot switch that actually controls uh, just a basic little on-off switch if you want to plug in to control your overdrive buttons over here. Uh, I may or may not get a foot switch for that. I don't know. I don't really use a lot of overdrive when I'm playing, but 
Uh, you know, that's just another feature. Uh, probably uh, the best features for me on this. Uh, okay, you have a, an auxiliary channel, and that's if uh, you want to plug your music into it. And you can either use a you know regular guitar cable or, or like a three millimeter. And actually, uh, what I do uh, when I'm playing music, I just use a. Uh, this goes from my iPad uh, right into your uh, aux jack, and uh, it's got a balanced line out. If you uh, want to run it straight into a PA system, okay. And you got a uh, send and return if you have any. Uh, pedals you want to use. Here's one for the earphones, another great feature because usually uh, where I live in an apartment you can't play bass real loud so this really gives me uh, a chance to like crank it up as loud as I want and just play through headphones and like I say you got your auxiliary here and you got the volume on that uh, you know, which lets you play as loud as you want into your own ears so you won't uh, get kicked out of your home or your apartment. Uh, got a high frequency mute button if you want to use that and it's just like I say this is just basically the uh, jack for the foot switch for the uh, overdrive section another thing uh, that I really love about this uh, I don't know if you can see this or not but the way that's uh, kind of catacornered on the back you can actually uh, lay this down and kind of use it like a monitor wedge and uh, this is really good for me uh, because Probably about 20 some years ago, uh, I was on a lake with my cousin and we were uh, water skiing and tubing. And uh, I was on the tube, you know, and I had the vest and had the Velcro gloves and everything like that on. And uh, my cousin, he was going around in circles on the boat. Well, he was only going like 25 or 30 miles an hour, but on that rope, it's maybe 60. So uh, he's like, You want me to speed up? And I'm like, No, man, slow down, slow down. Well, he thought it'd be funny, so he sped up. Well, I couldn't hold on. My arms were shaking. I flew off the tube, looked like a rock skipping across the top of a creek, and the first thing that hit the side of the water was, uh, or hit the water was the side of my head, you know, my ear. And I didn't think anything uh, bad about it, but, you know, it just kind of had that feeling like, you, you know, when you get water in your ear. Well, a couple days later, I couldn't even stand up because I had vertigo. There was blood and infection and everything uh, coming out of my ear, and I actually had to have call my dad to take me to ER, so I, I had busted my eardrum, basically. And uh, once I got in to see the doctor, you know, he uh, he jammed a little thing down my ear, which really didn't feel all that great. He said, yeah, you've lost about 25% of your eardrum, you know. And I was like, well, that's wonderful. Uh, but he told me it was probably uh, better that it happened like that way, you know, like in a traumatic way, than actually having an infection beforehand, because those heal better. Apparently, he said, you know, I would never get all of my hearing back, uh, especially like if someone is talking to me on this side and there's background noise, it's kind of hard for me to, to pick it up. But anyway, as far as getting back to what that means, as far as this, where I can uh, set this up as a monitor wedge, uh, I can actually have it coming straight up in back of me or in front of me, however I want it, and I'll be able to hear it and uh, just kind of isolate it from, you know, everybody else, what everybody else may be doing, and it might not, not turn into mud on this side. So basically, a lot of a lot of really nice features that I love on this. Okay, let's get to the base. Uh, like I say, this is a it's a Schecter Studio Series, a five string. Uh, I've got active pickups. Uh, I've got EMGs, and uh, then on the back, I've got the compartment for the two uh, nine volt batteries. You got one uh, one battery per pickup. Uh, you know, and uh, a lot of people, I mean, people are different. I mean, I like active pick up, pickups on the base. You have to be careful, though. Uh, do not leave, even if you're not playing, do not leave your cord plugged up because that will drain the battery, even if you have your amplifier off. So, uh, yeah, just un I had to find this out the hard way years ago. So make sure you're unplugged if you've got something with active pickups. But uh, it's got a great finish on it. It's got a honey maple finish. Uh, the head is made out of, uh, I think, mahogany and uh, babinga wood, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it's got a, uh, it's got a walnut and a maple neck, and it's got neck through construction. And all that means is, you know, a, a lot of guitars, uh, the neck bolts on in the back, 
and I, on the base, I always liked that kind of construction because it, you know, it always seemed to play a lot better or the, uh, you know, just a little bit more sturdy, you know. Like I say, this is a walnut and maple on the neck, uh, mahogany babinga wood. It's a rosewood fretboard. Uh, got gold sock satin hardware on it, which is uh, pretty cool. And uh, got Grover tuners. And uh, but anybody that plays and is a player tells you, although a uh, a pretty guitar looks nice, you want one that plays and the one's comfortable with. And like I say, the one I played in Guitar Center was great. And uh, you know, I was really hoping that this one would be as good when I got it. And uh, as most players know, usually when you buy a new instrument, you're going to have to set it up as far as the intonation and everything. And I came in and this thing was already set up. I didn't have to adjust anything at all. You know, I played every every note on every fret, on every string. And, uh, you know, you're not going to get a guitar or a bass in absolutely perfect tuning. I mean, there's no such thing, but you can get close enough. I think it's just a natural flaw, like in guitars, where you're not going to get... Uh, everything, uh, you know, just absolutely pitch perfect. But you'll get it close enough to where it sounds like it anyway. Uh, I mean, there might be a lot of purists out there that's going to debunk me or whatever, but in my experience. Uh, like I say, it's, uh, it's got a great little setup. You have a three-band EQ here. Uh, you have the highs and the, I mean, you got your treble in the mid and the, and the bass. And on here you have the uh, main volume level. And this is the... Uh, the blend control lets you play between the pickups. Uh, usually, I kind of set, set mine in the middle. Uh, but like I say, you can play, or you can play all. You can play off of the the bridge pickup or the neck pickup, or you can just keep it in the middle and just have a blend of the two. Uh, like I say, I really love this instrument. I've been playing the heck out of it uh, since I got it. Uh, what I'm thinking about doing is maybe uh, throwing up some bass covers of uh, some of my favorite tunes. Uh, you know, they might uh, you know, be anywhere from Kiss all the way to Michael Jackson. I mean, just stuff that I love to play on the bass and it's fun to play. Uh, I'll turn this on and let you get a, an idea of what it sounds like. Uh, we'll try not to get this too loud. I'm going to try to be easy on my neighbors. Uh, but uh, let's say you got the three band EQ. Uh, you got the, and this is up all the way on the. the try to keep those in the middle and same thing on the pickups now you can play uh, you can play off the uh, bridge pickup which is a uh, you know it's like a uh, you know more trebly sound so or you can go all the way back and get a more uh, compressed bassy sound So, uh, we usually all play in the middle, and I, I might fiddle with the amp a little bit. Uh, like I say, this has got an overdrive on it. Uh, let's see, crank this up a little bit. Uh, I'm sure Hippie and uh, a lot of other guys that, uh, like uh, Kiss will recognize this riff. I don't use overdrive a lot. Uh, like I say, it's got a ultra high on this. Or you got an ultra low. 
got more of a muted sound. Uh, like I say, you got your three band EQ. Uh, that's basically it. Like I say, I'm gonna I'm gonna start throwing up uh, maybe some uh, bass covers, and uh, I appreciate uh, any of you guys that want to come along on this little journey and want to give me some feedback on anything. Thank you, and I would be humbled uh, if you were to tune in. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, basically what's going on lately. Uh, I might fiddle around here a little bit. Let's see. Get my little Wilson Pickett. Broadway. Uh, like I said, one of the last bands I played in uh, played a lot of blues, uh, blues type rock. Let's see. I might be putting some uh, base covers up. Uh, like I say, appreciate all comments. Uh, like I say, would be humbled that anybody would want to listen to that. But uh, just a little bit something different. Hope you guys have enjoyed. And as always, onward and upward.